episode two of my knitting vlog. Um, this episode is going to be on raglan construction. So whenever you make a sweater, there's a lot of different ways to do it. And um, like how I made my sweater vest um, was a very specific way of making a sweater, but not the only way in episode one. So this garment that I have on right now is I constructed it raglan using a raglan method, I guess you could say. Um, but it is not done. So right now I am currently knitting down and I'm at the edge right here and I just tried it on to make sure that it was the right length because um, I want to make it like a cropped. So um, usually whenever you're making the raglan sweater you start at the neckline. Well that's what you do. You start at the neckline so you cast on the amount of stitches that you want and then usually you'll work back and forth a couple rounds to increase stitches to make the neckline kind of curve in. Then you'll join the round. And then you'll have four points of increase, so um, two for each shoulder. So on the left side of the shoulder, on the right side of the shoulder, left side of the shoulder, right side of the shoulder. So you have these four points of increase, and then usually you increase every other round at those points, so increasing eight stitches every round. So you can see that you can leave a certain amount of stitches in between to kind of make a little band. So here, these are the stitches in between the increase, and then I increase on either side of this band. You can see that. Um, so yeah, one thing that is wrong with this sweater that I think I can fix when blocking is there, as you can see, there's like a little line here, like a little ridge. And what that is from is that I joined the round um, after I increased the stitches for the neckline. So um, the, the true new round is right here. And if you do not join, if you do not, it's whenever you're changing color, especially like on just one row stripes like this, um, if you don't start the round at the right place, then you might have like a weird little like strip where there's like the, the they don't line up exactly and if you have that you want it to be in the underarm and so here the colors line up correctly because this is the beginning of the round but I think whenever I was changing colors um, my tension wasn't exactly right through every round and it get got a little bit tight here so I think that I can fix it but that's one thing to keep in mind is to try and make the beginning and end of your round always at the underarm. The next steps for this specific sweater, since I am right here, what I would need, so this is actually still on a knitting needle, my uh, little circular needles, let's see. So what I would need to do is take this off, bind off the edge. Um, usually whenever I'm doing um, a ribbing, I always bind off and do like a ribbed bind off unless I'm trying to um, kind of make it tighter at the edge maybe like on a cuff or something like that you might not need to do a ribbed bind off depending on how you want it to look but yeah I would do a ribbed bind off and then after I'm done with that I'll have this sweater what I'll probably do next is pick up the stitches around the neckline and then knit the collar and then I will pick up the sleeves this all the sleeve stitches right now they're live stitches they're just on scrap yarn I'll pick all these up and then I'll just knit down for the sleeves and then pick all these up, knit down for the other sleeves, make a cuff, and then bind off. This is supposed to be like a cropped, kind of, yeah, cropped, boxy sweater. So I kind of was thinking about just making it short sleeve. I kind of like short sleeve sweaters sometimes, but I think it might be best if I put sleeves on it just because the sleeves are really boxy. Um, a lot of times whenever you're doing ribbing, you'll switch to just one size smaller, but if you want the ribbing to be like a lot tighter, especially if you're using a yarn like this that is kind of like a little bit loose, then you, maybe for the cup, you want it to be tighter, so you could go down like two or three needle sizes. So like the body of this sweater, I use a seven, and then the edging, Okay, four. So I went from seven for the body to four for the cuffs. And this yarn is a Nipix Bear Alpaca. So, yeah, it's a worsted weight yarn. Or actually, it's an Aran weight. It's an Aran weight yarn. So you're supposed to use it with like size like nine, ten, some needles. But since I wanted it to be sweater, 
I don't really want it to be super, like, I don't know, like have holes in it or back type of thing. So I want it to be a little bit more dense. Um, that's a good word for it. A little bit more dense. So I knitted it on the 7. And I've actually knit it with this yarn on bigger needles too, and it looks totally fine. It just depends on how dense you want your sweater to be. Okay, so now that I have changed out of that sweater, I'm going to show you guys a couple of raglan sweaters that I've made um, that are kind of vary in construction a little bit. So one of them is from a pattern. So this sweater is also made with that yarn. I'm making this this sweater from my extra yarn that I made for this, that I had to make for this sweater. So this sweater that I have is a turtleneck. Uh, it, the pattern is from one of the Lane, um, Lane pattern books, and I will put the to that pattern on Ravelry in the description. And yeah, also Ravelry, you if you want to look at some of my projects, you can follow me on Ravelry. I don't know. I'll put the link to my Ravelry in the description. Okay, so another. This is one of the first sweaters that I ever knit. I wear it all the time, like an, I wear it like an obscene amount. And also because all of these things that I've made are made of wool um, and like some alpaca and stuff, but basically are really hard to wash. <laughs> so I wear it like an, an appropriate amount <laughs> based on how many times I actually wash it. But anyway. <laughs> So you can see the neckline is kind of wonky. I think that I cast on way too many stitches and then I should have decreased here to make it so that the um, collar doesn't kind of like flop out. But you know what, I don't really care because I just wear this straight up for warmth because it is so comfortable and so cozy. Um, I think this is probably a lot of yardage because it's so boxy, but the boxiness does make it really easy to wear and really fun to wear. So yeah, that's one thing that you should think about whenever you're making a sweater is like what function do you want it to serve, what clothes do you think you'll wear it with that you already have. Um, yeah, so that's pretty important. So even though the sweater is kind of wonky, I still wear it all the time and yeah, it's really comfortable. Also, whenever you're making a raglan sweater, you want to um, cast on a couple stitches underneath the armhole um, because whenever you don't do that you get these holes and you can always fix these holes but I just haven't done it there's probably one over here yep and that's just like how it is it is a turtleneck uh, I'm so I made up that pattern it's not even really pattern it's just it's raglan is so easy you just the only thing you need to figure out is how many stitches to cast on and how many stitches you want the body to be around, really. And then everything you can just do by like holding up the garment, like I was doing with my um, sweater earlier, and like trying it on and seeing like how it fits, if you want it to increase more, if you want to decrease, however you want it to fit, you just adjust it as you're knitting, which makes Raglan the perfect sweater pattern for people who are just starting out with sweaters and want to kind of mess around with their own construction. This is a turtleneck sweater pattern that I made. So you can see there's the raglan. I did this, this is one of the first patterns that I ever made, I think. Um, so it's a little bit wonky. Uh, I didn't decrease that many stitches at the turtleneck because I wanted it to be kind of loose and comfy and not feel like I'm choked, I'm being choked. This sweater, so I'll show you guys. This is pretty bulky. I uh, I did this thing here where I started knitting back and forth on the edges. So this is all three by one rib. Um, it started knitting back and forth, so it made this kind of like little thing here. Um, so you can do that if you want. That's kind of like a fun little design. Um, I don't really like the fit that much because I think the raglan is like at a weird angle. I don't know, it's like too far up. I should have cast it on more stitches right here so it would be like lower down. So that's a little bit weird. And yeah, it's just kind of, I don't know, something about the fit is odd. Hello. So, 
This is my second raglan construction that I'm going to show you guys. Um, in progress since I finished my other sweater. Um, and yeah. So now I have started a cardigan. You can see it's not connected in the middle. I started this cardigan. I am using not a rib stitch, but this other stitch, I don't know what it's called, but instead of, it's like ribbing, but on the front, whenever you're on the right side, you just knit, and then you rib on the wrong side, and it creates, here, you can take a look at it, I think it's really pretty, it's still really stretchy, like ribbing, um, and I'm using a 100% wool yarn that I got from Packetans a while ago, I don't know if some of you know what Packetans is. I think they're all closing down, so sad. But yeah, 100% wool yarn. Uh, it's a worsted weight. I'm using right now. <laughs> excuse me. I'm using right now size nine needles um, to work back and forth on this cardigan. And as you can see, I have four points where that's the wrong side. Okay. I have four points where there are. Um, stitch markers, so one, two, three, four, and I think here you can more clearly see, since we're looking at it from the top, how um, I'm increasing on either side, it's creating like this triangle little square right here, and then it will kind of fit like that, but um, it'll be more stretched out, I guess, yeah, like this, so I just started this, um, I just started this yesterday, so I'm moving along, it's on a size 9, like I said, so it's pretty fast. So, with this pattern, I just made this one up. My plan is to knit this, obviously the raglan, until I get to the sleeves, and then I think I'm going to not decrease on the sleeves, really, and then just decrease in a lot whenever I get into the wrist, like just on one row, just so it will create this like puff at the end of the sleeve. Um, that's my plan for now. And then I will also have to come back in, once I've made the whole body, I'm going to have to come back in and um, put on edging, so neckline edging and um, edging on the front uh, where the buttonholes and the buttons are going to go, um, since it is a cardigan. Hey guys, um, so it's later in the day now. I got back from work a couple hours ago and started knitting and watching the Great British Bake Off. Um, <laughs> I'm at that point where I want to stop knitting, but I can't. You saw in the last scene, I am still knitting. <laughs> this is much bigger. Um, this raglan um, cardigan. I'm still knitting, and yes, it is. I have made substantial progress on it today. I want to finish the <laughs> raglan part tonight, but I don't think I will. Um, it's actually it's possible because I'm working this on a size nine. It is going really fast. <laughs> I mean, or I'm just spending hours, too many hours on it, and it's progressing in the way that it normally would. <laughs> um, Hey guys, so I did not stay up last night and finish my raglan, but it is tomorrow and <laughs> and now we are ready to move on to the next stage. So I'm going to show you this basically step by step because this is the only part of the raglan that you actually need to kind of know how to do. Like everything else is so easy. And this is like, actually this is easy too. I'm going to show you now how to take your raglan and move from the shoulders to the body. So right now I have just continued to do those four increase or those eight increases every other um, every other row. My cardigan is long enough to go from here where my collarbone is down to my armpit. Um, so I can 
take the sleeves off, like put them on scrap yarn, and then start knitting the body down. Yeah, so what you will need are two strands of scrap yarn, or two strands of scrap yarn, a tapestry needle, and just your just your work. So step one, what we're going to do is knit up to our first stitch mark marker. Okay, I have knit up to my first stitch marker. I'm going to take it off. Um, and then I'm going to knit that stitch that's between. And then I'm going to take off my second stitch marker. And then what I'm going to do is cast on 10 stitches. So I'm going to do this through this method. So just looping the yarn and setting it on the needle. So. I think that's good. And now what I'm going to do is take my tapestry needle and take one of the scrap yarns. Um, just put that through there. And then I'm just going to slip, step two, slip all of the stitches of the first arm between the first and second increases. Um, onto scrap yarn. So I've got to my third stitch marker, i.e. my second increase, and what I'm going to do, take that stitch marker off, pull out the scrap yarn, and there we go. Then I'm just going to tie, tie these threads together in a little bow. I probably just a knot. Okay. And then see all my shoulder arm stitches are on scrap yarn now. And I've cast it on my extra stitches. And then make sure you don't twist the rounds, especially if you cast on extra stitches. And then step four, just start knitting. Just continue from where you were at before. Take the second stitch marker off, cast on 10 stitches, second piece of scrap yarn, just through my tapestry needle, and then slip all the stitches from your second armhole onto the scrap yarn. Created the second sleeve. And then I've already cast it on the stitches. So I'm just gonna knit through the marker and knit that right. Now I've completed this row to um, get the sleeves off of the needles. So as you can see, I clearly have two defined sleeves, two fronts, and a back right here. And so what you would do from here is continue working down the body till you get to the edge where you want the body to be done. Make the edging on there, and then you would want to pick up these sleeve stitches, knit down, and then occasionally decreasing to make the sleeve come in. Same thing on the second sleeve. Pick up the collar stitches, make a collar. Pick up the stitches along the side to make the, um, the edging where you put the buttons. So yeah. Hey, thank you guys for watching this video. I just want to check in um, real quick and show you how my 
Twitter is going. If you want to see the full project once it's done, come see my Ravelry page because it will probably be done in like two days. <laughs> I don't know. Probably soon. Okay, so as you can see, I have finished one sleeve and I ended up doing the thing where I kept it kind of bulky and decreased right at the cuff and then knit the cuff down with pretty small needles. Same thing here. I did the body on a size 9 and then I did the cuff of the sweater on a size 2 and a half. Yeah, so that's where I'm at right now. I'm working on the other sleeve. Do the color, do the edging, and we're good.